Hello everybody and welcome back to another map tour. This is Durango by Turbo Runner, which is actually in the mod contest, so you can vote for it if you would like to. So yeah, basically, uh, there is actually a really big description for this, but it isn't on this this page just here like it used to be in FS17 and the previous versions. So I'm going to probably read it out as we go through the tour, instead of just keeping you on this screen. As lovely as it is, I don't want to really keep you on just a static screen for the next minute. So let's just get straight into it. And it says Durango from shore to the mountains. I must also just say as well, we're going to be actually using the Scar Rock, which is a, a mod which is also in the mod contest. It is by a completely different modder. This is by the North Modding Company. So we mustn't get these two confused. They are two completely separate modders, two completely separate mods, and they are both in the mod contest. So yeah, it's just a really good way of me basically demonstrating two mods as we go, a map and a mod, because um, I want to get as many different things shown as possible which are in the mod contest before the voting period is over. Okay, so this is where we start. I must just say that I do have the third person mod installed as well, which is also in the mod contest. So if you want to vote for that, then you can do. So yeah, what we're going to do is just tour this as much as I can do. It is actually a four times map, so it is pretty big. Well, to put it simply, four times the size as the other maps, as the standard maps. So we are going to be uh, sort of pushed for time while exploring this fairly dramatic landscape. Very interesting. And this is actually a good opportunity for me to just start to uh, read out the description, which is on ModHub. So this is all quoted. Are you ready for the fantastic landscape of the American West? High mountains, narrow ravines, deep canyons, the bizarre stone shapes of Monument Valley, and the fertile Pacific coast await you on this four times map. The wind blows around the rocks. The sun burns down hot. The trees rest in the shadows of the rocks and mountains. Will you be successful here? Do farming on large and small fields, or cut down trees like a real lumberjack. No matter what you do, three train lines will help you to deal best with the wide area and ensure efficient transport of all goods from the plateau to the coast and back. A lot of companies are just waiting to buy your products. Harbour, restaurant, ranch, spinneries, sawmills, and trading companies have a long tradition here. Recently, two new biogas plants have started their service. Okay, so there you go. That is the description of Durango by Turbo Runner. It is now time to just very quickly move across to Scarrock the Car by North Modding Company. So, yeah, what we're going to do is very quickly take a look at the dis different uh, customizable features. But I do just really quickly have to uh, just read out the uh, description, which again is going to be quoted from the mod hub page. So the Skarag is a 4x4 pickup truck with a powerful 7.3 litre diesel engine that will pull heavy loads without a problem. It features everything from different bumpers to different suspension, lots of wheel options, three different hitches including a fifth wheel hitch, a big fuel tank on the bed for refueling machinery in the field, lots of colour options and design options are also available and this makes the truck an all out American beast. I like the sound of that, it's a very fitting uh, machine for this particular map. So yeah, we have the different colors. By the way, it's 325 horsepower, as you can see here, but we do have a different engine setup as well. But yeah, colors, basically whatever you want. And you can have pretty much any color for the rims as well. No, I'm not gonna have that set up. It was just an example. So I'm probably just gonna go with uh, chrome. And also, hmm, I guess red. Massey Ferguson Red. Sounds good. So yeah, single style, dual style, long bar style. There you go. So three different roll, roll bars on the back there. Um, we also have the attaches, trailer, that's trailer low. Uh, trailer, trailer low and tank for refueling machines. Fifth wheel, and then back to the, uh, the original. So we'll just go with the uh, the default. Engine setup is the City Runner, 325 horsepower, and the uh, workhorse is 425 horsepower. The off-roader is 625 horsepower. Okay, so then we have the wheel setup, 33-inch road runners, and then we have 33-inch uh, off-road, and then we've got wide, obviously there, it goes off the page, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that is uh, just like a, a raised, raised wheel, larger rim, 37 inch, and there's also jewelers on the back. <laughs> um, yeah, so there are so many different options. 
Uh, is that lifted? I, I'm not too familiar with this sort of uh, modding of uh, pickups and stuff. But I'm sure my viewers will be able to uh, shed some light on it for me. I think they are just different wheels, aren't they? Just different size wheels. Different setups. So I quite like the 37-inch. Uh, that really does look like a beast. So there we go. £79,000. Let's buy it. But we'll go for the off-roader. Why not? It, it looks incredible. I can just about afford it. £100 to spare. So if I just tab across through the machines that we do start off with, we can go to... to the beach. <laughs> yes, it's the beach train. Love that. I love that it's been uh, reskinned. The canyon train. And finally, the default train. So here it is. Yes, I must just once again say that this is not included with the map. This is a separate mod altogether by the North Modding Company. Okay, so uh, let's just put the lights on. We do have the light bar on top. Kind of looks like a boat actually from the back. It's not supposed to be an insult or anything. It's a very, I, I guess you could say, unique style. This really does look like it has the capabilities of going pretty much anywhere. Uh, so it is going to be, it would be a very interesting pickup to actually have if you're using it for everyday farming. So anyway, yes, we must we must drive on the correct side of the road. It must be the right hand side for here. So I'm just going to drive around as much as I can do. With it being such a big map, it's going to be quite difficult to actually cover everywhere. Obviously, it's very easy to cover everywhere, but the video would likely be about an hour long. So I, I try and keep these videos around 20 to 25 minutes, which means really just blasting through everything. But I think a good thing for me to do is just to show you the the map. I was going to say mini map, but I think, yeah, nothing about this is mini. Even if it was small, it would not be a mini map. It's huge. So yeah, so many different cell points. And you can see on here, massive list. Absolutely massive. So I'm just going to drive around. I think we'll go down here first and just explore. You see it's very green down here and then it's more like the desert up there. So we're sort of between the two currently. Let's go this way. This can actually do 86 miles per hour as well. So there's nothing slow about the Scar Rock. Yeah, so this is obviously the area where all the trees are. I think that's probably what the, uh, the green area is. It's sort of hinting that everything around here is it's very lush, lots of trees, lots of grass, whereas the other side is very sandy and very dry and incredibly hot. So yeah, the thing you're going to really notice here is um, on the minimap it might not look like you're going very far at all, but actually you're covering a lot of area since the map is so large. So, yeah, let's just go through here. Timber there, as you can see, timber cell point. Definitely no shortage of timber. And I must just say this uh, map is actually 900 megabytes. It is pretty big. But I'm recording, obviously, and the computer is still running it really smoothly. There was one lag spike before, but that was nothing, really. Overall, it's very smooth. Uh, so we do have some other cell points as well. This is the ranch. We've been to the sawmill. There's a restaurant as well. Uh, this is going to go across here. We have cotton, cotton fields. And then we can go to the railroad silo just here. The rail silo Valley West. And hopefully head down to the sugar mill and the harbour. Wow, okay. So this is quite clearly two bridges together. Makes it sound not very interesting, but actually it's so dramatic. Incredibly dramatic. And this is very well done. Very well done indeed. So if this is your kind of map, you know, the area which is set in, uh, I can imagine this is just like a dream come true to many people. As you know, I do tend to stay on the British maps. However, this really is quite something. It is uh, very highly detailed, especially considering the size. And um, yeah, it's, it's got so many different places of interest. We have the train line 
crossing the river just there. Or the ravine, I should probably say. And I'm pretty sure this is actually the coast down here, because it did say that before I loaded the, uh, the map up. That is pretty much all it did say, so... Uh, yes, we are going to the coast. I think we go across here first, which I think is... Well, the other one... The other one was the sugar mill. So this one is the harbour. I always do like a map with water. It, it really does change a map. I've got to cross that. I don't know if we can get across with this, but I, I've got to give it a go. So here you go. It is the harbour. I think it might be the same harbour model as those on other maps. So the, the base game harbour, I think. Uh, don't want to say for sure, though, because I'm not convinced. But I would say it's certainly taking assets from the default harbour. So that's very nice. We do actually have a ship in port. I almost crashed. I'm too busy looking at different things. So yeah, it is... It really is quite something, this. Very detailed. Okay, so I'm going to try and cross that bridge, and then we can go across to where the sugar mill is. And then we're going to have to try and go north again. I might go east, possibly. Um, but it just depends what there is over there. We need to go to the most important places. And I've managed to get lost. Okay, so I've managed to find my way out of there. And this is just about narrow enough to support the scar rock. That's quite something. It's like it was made to measure, except I have just crashed. You couldn't do that at speed, that's for sure. So, we do have the uh, this landmark from the Ravenport map. Yes, I think it's the whale skeleton, is it? I, I can't remember. But it is the skeleton from the base game, from the base map. And we have a store here. And actually, this isn't the sugar mill. The sugar mill is a bit further over. So I say, welcome to Dolphin Lighthouse. Indeed, we have another landmark just here. Now, I, I must just apologise for driving on the left. I keep driving on the left accidentally. It's a habit. And yes, here we go. The sugar mill. I think the trigger was just here. There you go. So you can bring your sugar cane to here if you'd like to. Uh, of course, if you if you do have sugar cane, it's probably a good start. Uh, so, we've been here, we've been here, we've been over to the ranch, and we've been to the sawmill. We started somewhere around here. So I want to... Oh, wow, this is huge. <laughs> I want to go north up here, and then go around here, and then somehow get back to this sort of general area. This is going to take a while. I might have to do a few jump cuts. I don't like jump cutting, but when I'm just travelling the roads we've already been on, it's just the only option really. So we're going to head north, and then I'll resume this video when we get to a place of interest. Okay, I thought I'd show you this. I love the way that the train line just sort of gradually creeps over the road and into the mountain. In fact, I should probably be touring this map on a train, considering we have three different trains which go to different areas. So I think what I might do is just go to this area in the north, and then we'll jump on the train and do the rest of the map that way, since I think a lot of the areas are actually covered. In fact, probably in, in more depth, since I'm only following the roads here. I drove too fast. Um, yeah, so um, it's clearly a good self-uprighter. I think it's just clear to see how much effort and time has been put into the map, and also the 4x4. I mustn't overlook the 4x4 just because I'm driving it continually. Um, yeah, they're both very, very high quality, and of course, it's always hard to fully appreciate a mod when you don't actually know how many hours have been put into each thing. If you knew the hours, then I think everybody would appreciate something even more. Because, um, yeah, if you've ever tried modding, it's not easy. It does take a lot of skill and, well, a lot of time. Sometimes too much time. I think that's why quite a few modders did stop, because they weren't getting a massive amount of credit. I know there are a lot of people who really do appreciate the mods, but they don't get a massive amount, and um, it, it really does take up most of your time. So, anyway, from me, thank you modders. I, I, I appreciate it, and I'm sure many others do as well. It is greatly appreciated. 
Yes, I think we have now changed area. It's easy to say. This is like nothing I've ever seen before in Farming Simulator. I've never seen anything like this before. It's um, It, it kind of reminds me, weirdly, of uh, a Counter-Strike map. And that's not an insult, by the way. That is not an insult, because Counter-Strike maps are, are really fun and very well detailed. Um, I think it is, it's probably the colouring. I think that's what it is. Um, it is something that I've just never really seen before in Farming Simulator, which means that that could really make it do well in the voting. Unique things do well. So that's a biogas plant. I think one of the first ones which has been put in. Load of trees. Absolutely love that backdrop. And we have the Lapacho tree as well. The pink tree. And then we have like a a lake. And we do have other areas as well. I'm not too sure exactly what this is. It could be a placeable area, I guess. Or it could be an area just to build your farm. I have started on new farmer mode, by the way. So everything should be here. Okay, so let's just take another look at this map. If I was to go all the way down this road, we're just going to come across a load of fields, I think. So I'm going to cover that, hopefully from above, an aerial view later. Um, but yeah, I want to be covering a lot of this map with a train. It would be just the wisest thing to do, since they're all here. So I'm going to leave the scar arc just here, and yeah, I really do like it. I think that is such a good pickup for this particular map, and other American maps as well. Uh, obviously, I've gone for a fairly expensive version here, but it's worth it. It really is worth it. It's a beast. An absolute beast. Okay, so I'm on the beach train. I have absolutely no idea where this goes. I'm guessing the beach. So probably the southern area which you've already been to. But I'm just going to zoom out and allow you to appreciate everything. We'll keep the minimap open. Uh, I'm guessing it doesn't just go around in circles. No. I <laughs> no, it does. It goes to the beach. It goes through here. That'd be something if I was just going to be circling those rocks for some time. Uh, it, no, it spirals down. And actually, I think this is probably one of the first maps which has got such a unique train setup with the three different lines. It must have taken just the train line alone absolutely hours to implement. So this is actually not what I was expecting, this map. I, I've not played it before. This is the first time I've actually seen it. And it, this has exceeded all expectations. I didn't realise it was going to be so in-depth, so involved with these trains. Because I think what you can do... Obviously, I'm not a modder or a mapper, so I don't know for sure. But I think what you can do is actually export the original train line from a base game map and then just build your map around it. So the train actually follows the same track. But this is all new. This is not taken from any other base map. We're now going for a journey through the trees. If I was paying for this train journey, I certainly would have got my money's worth. I'm amazed. It's like the train journey that never ends. I just keep seeing new things all the time. And this is just one of the trains. So we're going to be taking another train journey. In fact, two more train journeys momentarily. But of course, we need to just get to where we started off with this one. I actually have no idea where that is. I, I, can't, I can't believe I'm actually lost for words. I I can't believe this map. It's incredible. I didn't think it'd be so detailed. It's the trains. The trains, I think, are what really make the map. I'm absolutely amazed. So here we are. This is where I started. I'm now going to change trains. This is the Canyon train. So this one is going to go north. The other one went south. Um, 
to be honest, I'm not too sure where the third one goes to, but I think these are the two main ones. Uh, so this one might be even more dramatic, possibly. Uh, now, I did just leave that recording uh, going, and then I time-lapsed it, so hopefully it wasn't too, you know, a focus or enough to make you feel sick, motion sickness. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't have just sort of sat here for the last six minutes without speaking, so I had to put the time-lapse in and put the music on top. The same thing is going to have to happen with the canyon train. Um, but yeah, hopefully this is going to... I think it's going to take us all over the north, and it does. It goes all the way past the rail silo lake and down to the lumberjack camp, I think. Obviously, I'm not, I'm not totally sure, but we're about to find out. So sit back and relax as we enjoy the train journey on the canyon train. Okay, so there you go, and that was another seven and a half minutes just to get back to here, which is where I left the beach train. So finally, we did actually see on that route the other train. We, we passed the track that it runs on, which I think is more in the middle. It, it doesn't go quite as much to the outskirts of the map. So it is going to be, it branched off here, came down here instead of going all the way around the outside. So it's just covering the inner fields, I believe. He's already moving. So, yeah, let's just uh, stick with this. But I think, yeah, it's, it's covering this inside area. More trees here. And I guess the one thing I've really overlooked here is the fields themselves. The fields and the yard. So, yeah, loads of fields. Definitely no shortage of them. And I'm going to hopefully take a look at the yard in a minute or two. I don't know if we need to actually be on the train for this. I think it does just cut through those middle fields. So, yeah, the two ones which I was really interested in, we've now been on, and I was thoroughly impressed. Um, so, yeah, let's just tap to where we have the vehicles. Now, we do start off with everything here, and this is located just here. Rail Silo Farm, and that's where the farmhouse is as well, where we started off. Uh, the Estancia de Pacho House. Quite a mansion. Oh, getting stuck on the stairs. Or maybe you're not allowed to go upstairs. Yeah, this is the uh, Estancia of the Pacho one because I can remember playing with the fruit before. And coming up here, no, you can't do. But I do have the fly mod, or the fly uh, console mode. Now, I might be able to look through the windows upstairs, possibly. <laughs> I've gone up too fast. Um, yes, there you go. There's the farmhouse. So from above, there is the farm. All the fields. We do start off with, I think, field number one to three. Yep, one, two, and three. Which, despite looking small on the minimap, are actually still large, as you can see. And if I go up here, we're, we're going to lose a bit of detail. Because if you start flying up above, uh, the detail is lost. But that gives you an idea of what the map looks like from above. And I really am impressed. So it really has been a very brief overview. Obviously I haven't been able to look at many of these different um, cell points at all. But they are here. Come and explore it for yourself. It's out now. Uh, you can download it from ModHub. So I really do recommend it. And you can obviously go on a much more thorough exploration. I was just doing a very nice brief overview. Uh, which in itself was still pretty tricky to do. Just because of the scale. The scale and detail. So, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Until next time, 
See you again soon. Bye for now.